Hello there, Shaggers, the warmed up corpse of a very unwell Adam Cleary here, and I'm taking the unusual step of standing before you to talk about Monday Night Raw. Now, normally I leave that to my more learned colleagues, but there was something on last night's show that really jumped out at me. Actually, before I start, I will acknowledge that yes, there was a lot that actually jumped out at me. You had Ambrose finally walking out on the shield. You had the Bellas finally turning on Ronda Rousey. You had Shawn Michaels finally coming out of retirement. And Lita came back into my life, finally. But there was one thing which obviously wasn't as headline grabbing as any of that, but might still have been the most interesting thing on the show. I mean, to me. Anyway, we constantly accuse WWE of lacking nuance, but this segment had it in pissing spades. I'm talking, of course, about the Owens-Lashley double turn. I know 99% of you know exactly what a double turn is, but for that 1% who might not, because we're a broad church here at What Culture Wrestling, a double turn is when you have a heel, make a face turn, and a face, make a heel turn in the exact same match or segment or promo or something, at the exact same time. The shining example of all this is always Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin from when this iconic photo was taken. Bret Hart was the face, Steve Austin was the heel, but Austin's refusal to give up, no matter how much Bret Hart tortured him and battered him, and then Hart's subsequent frustration at the crowd for getting on Austin's side in all this meant they both left that match having swapped roles. It was absolutely perfectly done, and this wasn't quite that good, yes, but it was still very interesting if you scratch the surface. It's me scratching the surface. Let's just look at what actually happened here. You had Bobby Lashley who, I mean, does not need any help to win wrestling matches, doubling up on Kevin Owens with his increasingly obnoxious mouthpiece manager, even though I secretly love him, Leo Rush. They brutalized him and that is not the behavior of a face. This in turn meant that Owens started getting the crowd on his side and they started cheering more and more and more when he was doing the comeback spots. You know, the bits in matches that faces do. And then they lost their nut entirely when he hit that Stone Cold Stunner and booed ferociously when he started getting brutalized. Now that is not the match makeup of a heel. Now, quite smartly on WWE's part, Kevin Owens is due to undergo surgery for a legitimate injury, but WWE.com are pinning this injury on Lashley's ultra-aggressive post-match beatdown. They are painting him as a dick and Owens in a sympathetic light, so they know what they're doing here. This time last week, myself and the rest of the great men were all sat in that office, enjoying listening to all the boos that accompanied Elias' big basketball dig that he made. Now, that was the most booed segment I have seen on Raw since It's My Yard Now. And who was in the ring with him, soaking up all that heat? Kevin Owens. Compare that to the pop he's going to get when he returns from injury. Night and day, chalk and cheese. Me and Miller. Why is this important? Why have I stood here for minutes whilst I'm deathly ill and done a video on something pretty much all of you already knew that you saw with your own eyes? What is the point of this, Adam? I hear you ask. Well, it's just been revealed that Kevin Owens has lost 88% almost of all the matches he's had in WWE in 2018. He has had one of the worst years a former top-level champion has ever had. That's why it's interesting. He's now getting some enforced time off, but the fact they've seen fit to sow these little seeds on his way out is very interesting. Like, yes, I know they might just have wanted to turn Lashley heel, but let's face it, they didn't need to beat up Kevin Owens, of all people, to do that. There's far better candidates for a heel turn beat down. So the fact they've ingratiated Owens to the audience before letting him have some time away implies they're going to give him a much better crack of the whip when he eventually returns, which, let's face it, he absolutely deserves because he's really, really good. And that is why the double turn was the most interesting thing on Raw for me, because it had nuance, it had future planning, it had things we don't normally get in WWE. And that is why I wanted to do the video. See, we we got there. We got there in the end. I need a lem sip. But hey, that's just me. So let me know what you made of all this in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter because, hey, let's face it, I might be dead soon. And you wouldn't want to miss that content and what culture on Twitter somewhere over here. In the meantime, though, thank you very much for watching. I have been the reanimated corpse of Adam Cleary, and I will maybe see you soon or not. Bye.